Good afternoon, folks. Um, so, some of you may have seen that I recently got a an estate Stanwell 2002 pipe of the year. Um, so, I thought I'd show you my process of cleaning through an estate pipe when I get it. And it's not the full salt treatment; it's short of that. But it's it's when I get a pipe which is in reasonable condition, um, I don't necessarily go through with that. I may do that afterwards if I'm trying to get rid of a ghosting, um, but I don't do the salt treatment very often, I must be honest. And if a pipe has a ghosting in there, which I really don't like, I, I usually won't even bother with the salt treatment. Um, uh, and I'll just either sell it or pass it on or whatever. I, I'm quite particular about that. I'm, I've got no problem buying estate pipes, but if they're ghosted with a flavor that I don't like, um, I generally will pass on it, unless it's a particular shape that I've really been chasing for, um, then I'll, I'll put more effort into it. But I don't smoke it so much that, um, you know, a few extra bowls that I don't like wouldn't go amiss. Um, I, I only smoke literally one or two bowls a day, if that. Um, so I want those to be enjoyable. And so I'm not going to waste those one or two bowls on pipes, which are really, to me, bad tasting. So it'd have to be a pipe that I really, really want. Uh, to put in that extra effort and those extra bowls to smoke through that um, legacy flavor. So um, I just thought I'd show you the basics. Um, I've already done quite a lot of the work on this pipe, um, but I'll show you what it, what, what it was that I did. Um, so this is a Stanwell Pipe of the Year 2002. I have had one of these before. I had one of these, uh, a new old stock, a, few, a couple of years back, um, which I sold. Um, and regretted selling it straight away almost um, and since then I've been looking for one um, to replace it and um, this is one I found on eBay not long ago very very nice condition really really nice condition and um, you know from a rep reputable um, eBay seller something that I bought from more than once um, and does a a fairly basic job of cleaning the pipes before we send them out you know it's, it's about as much as you can expect um, you know there are some who will completely sanitize it and it's almost like new um, internally but most I think will just give it a good old clean clean it out with a pipe cleaner maybe a bit of an al alcohol swab or something like that just to to get the basics done um, and that's about as much as you can expect and if they've done that that's already something you know some pipes you get which are untouched and again, a reputable dealer on eBay will say, I have done nothing to this pipe, it's up to you to do what you want to do. And some will say, I've cleaned this out and it's ready to smoke. Their opinion of ready to smoke might differ from your opinion of ready to smoke, but at least they've got a process which they've done. So this one I feel has had some cleaning done to it. It looks to me like it's been polished uh, sort of recently, you know, the, the smooth area has been polished. So I think that there's some uh, basic um, cleaning has been done to this pipe um, but um, I've already as I said done quite a lot of cleaning so the first thing that I do is the stem uh, for me the stem is the most important part of the whole pipe to clean um, the stem obviously is the bit that you put in your mouth the stem is the bit that the previous owner has drooled into sorry if you're eating um, and um, it's the bit that really needs the most attention. So I will start off with um, just initially, just a basic running through with a pipe cleaner. That's the first thing. Any sort of large bits of dirt and anything will get dislodged. I'll then take an alcohol solution. This is isopropyl, isopropyl, isopropanol, isopropanol, isopropanol. It's basically 100% alcohol, it's 99.9% .9 alcohol. So it's a strong cleansing alcohol. And what I'll do is, this one has a, a little, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a little central spout there. So you can, if you want, just pour some into a dish. But um, what I do is, I just put my pipe cleaner onto the hole, and I upturn it, and I just watch see this but I watch the top of the pipe cleaner absorb the alcohol it just starts to get darker and oops, a little bit too much there and then basically I will clean through um, and so initially you will get probably a very dark black pipe cleaner come through um, 
this one was brown it wasn't black but it's now obviously clean I've spent a lot of time on this already um, and then once your pipe cleaner comes through nice and clean um, what I also do is, is I'll wet the outside of this with alcohol and I'll just clean the bite zone right into the sort of that nook between the the back of the lip and the bite zone really give that a good clean with alcohol as well um, and then bend over that pipe cleaner let's get a fresh one make sure you've got plenty of pipe cleaners on hand just bend it over you don't want a sharp bend in there you want a little bit of a hook and again alcohol you just watch that sort of get wet you can see that it's got I don't know if you can see that on the video but and then you force it don't squash it flat because you want that to be springy so that it actually pushes against the outside of the tenon and you push that in and you just turn. twist 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 and again I've already done this so it's still coming out with a little bit of dirt but this was absolutely jet black before um, and uh, when you shine a torch down there you'll see that it's caked in sort of tar um, by the time you've cleaned it you should be able to see plastic um, you know you should be able to see the tenon the base of the tenon and it's a nice clean plastic which is what I can see here what I'm getting now is probably just a little bit of the briar that it's drilled into maybe past the end of the tenon um, and that will always have a stain and you're never going to get that 100% clean because it's wood it's, it's organic and it absorbs those black tarry kind of colors and they're always going to be in that wood so that's what I do for the inside of the tenon obviously this is a 9mm tenon with a regular tenon you're just going through from top to bottom so you take a, a fresh pipe cleaner give it a good dousing with alcohol put it in the narrow end feed it through till it comes through and then so you can see that and then you kind of want to have a, a good motion going and just keep going at it and what I usually then do is put the thin end into this end with a fresh clean one which I don't have to hand now um, I've gone through almost the packet on this pipe already put it through like that like that so then it starts this thicker end will then go through that way and will grip any dirt that's up that at that end so essentially you want to keep doing all of that until your pipe cleaners come out clean the next thing I'll do is again fold over put it into the mortise yeah, put some alcohol on it put it into the mortise if you've got a polished shank face you need to be careful because the alcohol will strip the finish so if that's the case then you might want to consider how you do that but just do it carefully don't overload it with alcohol and then just clean out the mortise the same way until that comes out clean and this one is pretty clean now um, and when it comes to the actual draft hole the actual bowl itself doesn't really need cleaning you might want to ream it or you might want to sand it just to get a nice consistent smooth round finish but um, whatever goes in that bowl gets burnt you know this becomes like a cauldron in there once you fire it up so whatever's in there is going to be burnt to a cinder it's going to be turned into carbon so cleaning it isn't really going to help you very much um, so what I do is again soak the thick end of the pipe cleaner with a bit of alcohol And I put it carefully into the draft hole and I watch as soon as I see it come through into the bowl I'll put my fingers there like that and then that so my fingers are hitting against the shank face so that the pipe cleaner doesn't actually come into the bowl if it comes into the bowl into the bowl it's gonna get black every single time and you're not gonna be able to tell if you if the shank is getting cleaned or not so you don't want it going into the bowl itself so you want to just make sure you use that as a stopper and just keep going in and out replacing the pipe cleaner as necessary 
and you can see that that's still discolored but it's a fairly light color which means that it's almost there again you do want to bear in mind that the shank drill is briar and that's always going to have a certain amount of stain it's never going to give you a white pipe cleaner um, because the shank has absorbed the tobacco juices and so those are always going to be there and there is going to be some discoloration you can't avoid that but you need to take a view on things you know you've got to look at your pipe cleaner when it goes in first and comes out maybe jet black and you've got to watch the progression as it becomes lighter and lighter and lighter and at some point you've got to decide it's clean enough that's still got a fair amount on there but it's a lot lighter than it was earlier You know, if it was really, really bad, you, you, you know, you'd be talking about using your wire brushes and things like that. This pipe doesn't really need it. Um, I do have some wire brushes somewhere, but I haven't actually employed them with this particular pipe. Hasn't really needed it. But I guess maybe I could do another video with a pipe that needs a much deeper clean. You know, everybody will have their way of doing things. I'm not saying that this particular method is gospel. It's just the way I do it. Um, and uh, you know lots of people who have lots of different ways of doing it some people will be much much more thorough um, you know I mean there is one thing that I do do sometimes if the shank especially if the shank is I feel too narrow then I will open it with a drill bit and that will automatically take it back to briar um, and there's no cleaning needed to be done that is something that you can do but this drill although it may not be as wide as I would do in my pipes it is wide enough and I don't mess with pipes unnecessarily. So um, I'll certainly want to smoke it first to see how, what the draw is like before I take a drill bit to it. So with any pipe, I don't mess with them unless absolutely necessary. Um, I like a pipe to be original, even if it's not to my liking 100%. Might not be the same way that I do it, um, but if it's close enough, I won't mess with the pipe. There's a few reasons for that. Number one, it's respect to the whoever made the pipe. This is the way they feel the pipe is best made. Um, and that's absolutely fine, even if it's not the same way that I make it. And number two, if I want to pass on the pipe, if I want to sell it later on, I want to be able to sell it as genuine, untouched, unmolested. Um, and if I sort of list it somewhere, I want it to be honest. I don't want to say that this is a Peterson pipe or it's a Stanwell pipe. Um, and the customer is going to think it's the way it was made by Stanwell or Peterson when in reality it no longer is because it's been changed so I avoid messing with pipes as much as possible as I say it's only when it's absolutely necessary if I get a pipe which is unsmokable which I have shown in the past as well especially with sort of heavily bent pipes 9 mil pipes which are sort of full bent almost impossible to, to drill correctly um, so in those cases, I sometimes just have no choice but to redrill them or to just ad adapt them in some way to make them smoother. I've been through the best part of the packet. You do have to be prepared to uh, spend about a packet's worth when you're uh, doing a pipe. So I'm actually seeing now colours of the stain, so that means that um, I'm the inside of the mortise was probably stained by Stanwell right at the beginning, which a lot of pipe makers do. I do that as well sometimes, just gives it a cleaner look. I'm reasonably sas satisfied with that. And obviously you need to let it fully dry out before you try and smoke it, because all you're gonna get is heat and tongue bite from, all, from the alcohol. The alcohol will evaporate fairly quickly, but it's best to leave it for a good while. Um, before you attempt to smoke it. Now the final thing that I'll do 
is the inside of the bowl. As I said, cleaning the inside of the bowl is, if you ob see obvious signs of dirt or if it's been lying around and it's dusty, obviously clean that out. But um, as I say, this is a cauldron, essentially. It's a mini cauldron and whatever goes in there, it gets burnt. So dirt per se doesn't really exist there, but um, certainly give it a quick swirl just in case there's dust or any dottle or anything stuck to the walls. So, I mean, that's going to come out black and that doesn't mean it's dirty. That just means it's a pipe. But what I will do sometimes is just to give it a fresh kind of um, sort of surface. I'll just take um, a piece of sandpaper, a fairly coarse piece of sandpaper. This is 180 grit. Just put it, make it into the shape of a circle, narrower then the, so it goes in easily without scratching the outside and then I let it spring open against the walls put my finger in and just do that you want to make sure you're protecting your clothing because a lot of this black dust comes out so you can see that there a bit of the carbon comes out I'm just going to empty this over the bin. You can probably see a little cloud. A big cloud. What this does is also you can give it a smell. And it will release what's a little bit what's underneath. You can get a little bit of a smell of, of what may have been smoked in there before. Um, because sometimes when it's cleaned by the previous by the, the dealer for instance maybe a bit of alcohol or whatever it's going to mask those smells perhaps you sand off the, the the top surface you're going to reveal a little bit of what maybe was smoked there before and also the condition of the bowl um, in case you know that uh, cake is hiding some sins Um, what I'm getting is alcohol because of the alcohol I've been putting in the mortise. So um, what I will do is before I smoke this, as I always do with a new pipe, I'll put a honey coating in there um, and uh, I treat it as if it's a new pipe, even though it's obviously been smoked before. Um, but whether it's a new pipe or whether it's a new to me pipe, I always use a honey coating just to give it a, like a, a fresh start. What that does mean sometimes is that when I smoke it the first time, if there is a ghosting in there, I might not get it straight away because of that honey. That's an expense which I am prepared to take. Um, and it might be that any dodgy flavor that's in there, I might only get halfway down the bowl or maybe even only the next bowl. Um, so, but I still prefer to have that because it helps build a new cake, which I know is kind of mine kind of thing. It, to me, it's just, maybe it's mind over matter, but I just prefer it that way. So it's just the way I do it. So that is, uh, a basic sort of rundown of how I prepare an estate pipe for its first use um, with its new ownership um, of my new own ownership um, but as I say this is a fairly average sort of clean down it's not a deep deep clean um, what I would say is as well is that if this if you're doing this to a non-filtered pipe don't put the stem back in until the next day uh, obviously it's going to swell with the alcohol even though the alcohol evaporates but it will swell some um, with a nine mil it's not such a big deal because um, um, the nine mil mortise is, is springy anyway and it, it expands on on the mortise but um, certainly if it's a regular tenon i would leave it separated which i'm going to do anyway because it helps it evaporate but um, definitely if it's a non-filtered pipe don't put it together until the next day so there we go. Um, I'm going to leave this apart now for a few hours. Um, I'll come back to it later tonight um, and see what it smells like, and see if the alcohol has evaporated. And um, maybe tomorrow morning it'll be okay for its first go under my ownership. We shall see. Um, so there we go. Thanks very much. Catch you on the next one.